When I was a kid, I used to collect Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Every time my parents went to the store to get groceries, which was probably once a week, I would ask them to get me a pack of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Over time, I actually had collected quite the deck. Naturally, going to school and going to an after-school program that was essentially middle school daycare, I met other kids who also collected Yu-Gi-Oh cards. One of the things about these cards was that they were like a lottery, so when you bought a pack, you would randomly get a bunch of different cards. Some were common, others were rare, and some seemingly didn't even exist. So we would meet up and we would trade these cards. Maybe I had a bunch of common cards and I would trade a bunch of common ones for a more rare card, or maybe I would trade a rare card that I had two of for another rare card. And this trading was super simple, fast, and I didn't have to worry about someone else stealing my cards. Now this is quite the intro for a video on atomic swaps, but you'll understand in a little bit. Welcome to Whiteboard Crypto, the number one YouTube channel for crypto education, and here we explain topics of the cryptocurrency world using analogies, stories, and examples so that you can easily understand them. In this video, we're going to explain what atomic swaps are, how they work, and by the end of this video, hopefully you'll understand how they compare to my Yu-Gi-Oh card swapping analogy. So similar to me wanting to swap my cards, you may have some cryptocurrency coins or tokens that you wish to swap to another coin or token. So let's go over the current way to do that using a centralized exchange like Coinbase. First, you must sign up to Coinbase. Now this is actually a lengthy process because they want all of your KYC information, which means you have to send them your social security number, possibly pictures of yourself, your home address, your phone number. They basically want to identify you even more than your accountant does. Next, if you have some Bitcoin, you have to deposit it onto their exchange. Now this is bad for two reasons. One is you have to pay a transaction fee of like $10. And then the second bad thing is that you also have to deposit into a wallet that they have access to. This means you have to trust they will not steal your crypto. Next, if you want to change your Bitcoin to something else, you have to sell your Bitcoin on their exchange for cash. Now Coinbase usually takes a fee at this point and since you're using them to sell your Bitcoin. Now that you have this cash, you can use this new cash to buy Litecoin for example. Now of course there's going to be a buying fee too, so Coinbase is really making decent chump change on you doing all of this. Finally, to keep it safe, you're going to have to transfer your Litecoin from Coinbase to your own personal wallet, which takes another network fee. But it isn't as much as transferring Bitcoin because Litecoin is a lot cheaper. So this whole process is actually a long process process with a lot of fees and you inherently have to trust Coinbase with all of your tokens. Now, let's go on to how atomic swaps work. So let's say you wanted to do essentially the same thing, trade your Bitcoin for Litecoin. So an atomic swap uses a third party that's very similar to a smart contract, but here's how it works. You put in some Bitcoins to this third party written code, and then someone else puts in their Litecoins. Now at this point, you've already both agreed to how much you want to trade, so it's non-negotiable. So you lock your coins into a metaphorical locked box, and then you give this box to the other person. Then they lock their coins into a metaphorical locked box and then they give it to you. Now when this transaction happens, someone gets the key to unlock their box. And when they do, the other person automatically gets their key to unlock their box. So you have essentially swapped tokens. Now atomic swaps are great for many reasons. First off, there is no room for human error. For example, if you deposit your coins in a Coinbase, Coinbase could get hacked and you could lose your coins in that hack. Next, the fees are extremely low because there's no crazy transaction fees and the waiting time is very short compared to using a central exchange. On top of those reasons, you also don't need to give up any of your personal information, no social security number or profile pic or your dog's left leg. This is actually why atomic swaps work and why they're commonly used. They do a great job of allowing users to swap their tokens. So, at this point in time, you might be wondering, what does the atomic part of atomic swap mean? Well, atomic in the computer science world means exactly as planned or it won't happen at all. So in the case of an atomic swap, it means that the swap will only happen if both parties do exactly what they said they would do, which is to send their coins to the intermediary. It also means they have to send the exact number of coins. An example of a non-atomic swap would be to send your coins to a stranger who said they would give you their coins and then hoping that they do. The atomic part essentially gets rid of the risk involved with swapping your coins with someone else. Moving on, what are the technicals of how it actually works? So let's get into the nitty gritty of how atomic swaps actually work. They use what is called a, a hashed time lock smart contract. And that means the funds that are deposited aren't accessible until both users have submitted their funds. Now, if someone or even if both parties do not submit their funds, then the users will eventually get their money back when the time locked part is up. 
So if you're watching this channel and you don't know what a smart contract is, you definitely need to go check out our video on them because they are the foundation of decentralized finance. Now one thing you need to know is that there are limits to atomic swaps. In general, both cryptocurrencies should have the same hashing algorithm and also support similar smart contracts. Just following these rules, it greatly limits which coins and tokens can be swapped. But atomic swaps are very new and progress is being made every day. So in short, atomic swaps are a great tool to move your money in crypto from one place to another, but they're also limited in today's technology. Personally, I would love to see how they change, adapt, and evolve to fit in the future, but we are simply an explanation channel here to teach, so you'll have to hit that subscribe button and stick around if you want to see any updates. We hope that you guys enjoy this video, we really hope that you've learned something, and most of all, we hope to see you in the next video.